I'm connecting to the cloud server. That doesn't sound good, <laughs> whatever that is. But yeah, okay, well, thank you all for coming along and giving me half an hour of your time. Promise you won't regret it because yes, I do have a gift for you. Um, now, in order to receive this gift, have you all got a pen and a piece of paper, blank piece of paper? Anything in front of you? Yes, yes, can't see everyone. So I'm scrolling up and down. Excellent. All right, so who wants their gift? Yes, me, 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 all right. Here it is. What I want you to do is take out your pen on your piece of paper. I want you to draw a line straight across the middle. We've all done that, yeah? Okay, thank you, Catherine. Okay, this is my gift to you. A line on a piece of paper. Now that's exciting, right? But wait, it's more than just a line, okay? This is a line of possibilities, okay? Why is it a line of possibilities? It's a line of possibilities because you have a choice. Okay, you have a choice to be above the line or a choice to be below the line. Now, before we talk about where you actually are on that line, let me explain a little bit more about what that means. You need to make a choice. Every day when you go out, you need to, in all your interactions, make a choice about how you feel and about how you're going to act. And that choice isn't dependent on whether the sun is shining today, thank God, because we're in Melbourne and well, most of us are in Melbourne and it's definitely not. Because guess what? Every day stuff is gonna happen to you. Whether you like it or not, stuff's just gonna happen. Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people. They just do, right? We've all seen that. So what exactly does being above the line or below the line really mean? So if you are above the line, it means you're living your life taking 100% responsibility for it. Successful people have this kind of catch cry that they are the cause of all the effects in their life. It's up to them. Now, sometimes that can make other people a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit unsure, because sometimes you might think, actually, that's not really true. But what matters is what you believe, okay? If thinking that you are responsible and thinking about hope and looking for a way forward helps you to empower your life, to live a better life, wouldn't you want to pick that? Wouldn't you want to pick that kind of a belief? Now, even if you don't always feel it, it's great to act like that, okay? That lovely saying that I've lived my life on, fake it till you make it, is totally, totally true here. I think for the coaches um, amongst us, I think they call it that as if. Live your life as if it were true, okay? And then it can become true. Now, if you're living below the line, you're living a life of the blame game as one great example blaming everyone else for the things that are happening in your life. It's not your fault. The other way I see that people play the blame game, and I'm totally guilty of this myself, is that self-blame as well. So an example of that is my parents got divorced when I was younger. If only I had been a better kid, if only I had studied harder and got better grades, then they would still be together. It's all my fault. Another way people's thoughts can run to live below the line is that endless justification. 
Now, the justifications are anything you can think of. For example, the training session today might not go that well because of the technology. It's the technology's fault. Oh, it's great. It was the tech's fault. Or um, we didn't get the deal I wanted to get because my business partner kind of let me down and she didn't come to the party. So it's really, it's not my fault. It's just a way things happen. The other way people can avoid kind of taking that responsibility is denial. Oh, I didn't do it. It was someone else who did it. it. Wasn't my fault. I'm not at the cause. It's just an effect. So an example I use when I'm normally with Tegan, who's my business partner, is Tegan went to private school, right? She got all the trimmings, all the wonderful upbringing that goes with going to private school, and I didn't. So I could spend my life saying, you know what, I could be better. I could be way more successful had I had the same opportunities that Tegan has. So then I kind of stopped trying. I don't try as hard. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Instead, what I try and do is say, I didn't go to private school. I went to a public school. I loved it. Great teachers, great friends. And I learned that I had to go and do other lectures in my holidays. I had to go to the state library to access resources. And at the end, when I went off to uni, I was far more prepared than what Tegan was, although we wouldn't tell her that, to be an independent thinker. So that's how I can kind of look at my life in an above the line opportunity. Other people look at this as cause or effect. So like I said before, people can go through their life producing lots and lots of reasons about why they didn't succeed. My ex-husband held me back. My parents didn't support me as much as I would have liked. And then you believe you're a victim, that you had no choice or no right in, in the way things turned out. And you know what? It could actually be true. It could be true that these people did hold me back. But the thing with that is you can either be right or you can be happy. Does that make sense? I can be right and say that those things held me back. I had a great example myself of this just the other day with my daughter. My partner was coming to stay. It was a Saturday morning and we were doing all the housework and cleaning. Now she um, said to me, oh, the only reason we're doing the housework, mum, is because CK is coming over and you want the house to be nice and you want it to be beautiful. Because she was a bit shitty that she actually had to, well, whoops, might want to blurt that bit out, Darren. Um, she was a bit annoyed that she had to help me. I kind of started to argue back, like, no, actually, you're never normally home on a Saturday morning. You're either in bed, fast asleep from partying too hard, or you're on someone else's sofa. So you don't know that that's what I do every Saturday morning. I started to argue, and then I thought, where is this going? So I just stopped and said to her, yep, you're right. I knew she wasn't. I said, you're right, I want to do it to make the house look nice for CK. She was like, yeah, mum, I knew it. Off she went and vacuumed and mopped for me. Happy days. That made me happy. It may not have been right, but it made me happy. So one of the, I'm not sure if this is going to work, guys. I'm not sure if you guys have had much success in playing videos. Have you had much success? But I will give it a try because I love this video. If it doesn't work, I can explain it. But I love this video as a simple, quick way of talking about how you have a choice. How you have a choice in life. Is it going to work? Bit of thinking music. No. Uh, Yay. Tell me if you can see. I might need to unmute because I can't see the chats. I so let me know. Need to unshare this yeah, screen is... and jump to the other screen. Okay, hang on. 
I can't delete out of it now because the other thing. Um, stop share. Okay. Right. Let me share this one and see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll tell you, but I just thought you might have got bored of hearing about me. Never. Okay. Can you hear that? Can you guys hear? No. Okay, I'm going to give up on that. And, put the link in and the I am going to, yeah, I've, oh, whoops. What I might do, Darren, is I might share it with everyone. I'll share the link with everyone afterwards. It's only a couple of minute, minutes. And it's a story that's told by a guy called Ben Zander, who's a really a famous music composer who then became a, a leadership trainer. Fabulous guy. And he tells his story about the two shoe salesmen who back in the 1800s, early 1900s, they went to Africa to sell shoes. Okay. They both had to report back to their head office in England and say what happened. The first guy wrote back and said, oh my God, this is a complete disaster. I don't know why we're here. They don't wear shoes. The second guy wrote back and said, oh my goodness, what a wonderful opportunity. They don't wear shoes. So to me, that's just a really powerful way to explain same situation, but how your mind can control the way that you think. Okay. So now we know that, I'd like to kind of open it up to us to have a bit of a chat to talk about what does this actually mean in terms of our thoughts, our body language, our words to be above the line and to be below the line. So as an example, a thought that I might have to be above the line is I'm actually responsible for this. I've got this. Can anyone else think of any thoughts or feelings or body language and words to help us be above the line? Yeah, I think uh, at the moment stress is like chaos, but like there's stress and there's learning. Like I'm learning so much, I'm implementing and changing so much, but I'm affected and I'm stressed and I'm chaotic um, is the below of the same thing. Absolutely, I love that. And it's like, you know, another way of looking at that, Stacey, as well as I uh, failed. You know what, I failed. There's no failures, there's just lessons learned. I've learned how I'm going to do that differently next time. So thank you. Anyone else have any? Yeah, I use, um, I use for, in my work and, and for myself is what, what am I choosing? I choose and get really clear on, okay, what am I, what's the end result of what I, what I want, what I'm choosing? Because by putting that line in the sand, it shifts, shifts it away from the lack and the limitation. It actually shifts into, you know, in, energetically into what I really want to create. Love it. I love that. That's a great above the line way to be, Jason. How would you show in your words to other people that you're above the line? Well, complimenting and yeah, acknowledging achievements as well, like uh, even if they're really small. Yeah, definitely. Rather than blaming people for all the things that have gone wrong. A lot of our above the line words are typically more I words, like I, the way you um, introduced me, Darren, didn't make me feel that great, <laughs> rather than you made me feel crap, <laughs> which is not true. Of course, it's not true. But it's reframing things into kind of the I statements. And that's, again, giving me back the power and back the control in my life. In terms of body language, what can we do in our body language? How do we walk into a room? How do we 
Karen. Think, um, you know, it's radiating energy. It's like, you know, I, I always think of the an analogy of a, a, a duck on water. Like the duck always looks really calm on top. But underneath, he's going, la, 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 he's paddling away like a mad thing. And that's me most of the time. Um, but I never, ever uh, show that. I always show happiness and positive energy and, and, and always sitting upright and, and feeling, making that. I, I like to, other people to feel good when they see me, not feel um, feel down and out. And I don't want to be a negative Nelly. I want to be a positive Pete. Absolutely. I love that, Darren. And you, you are so right. That calm, relaxed aura that you present, just like um, I think Catherine or, or Stacey said, you know, as soon as we wave on Zoom, everyone else waves too. If you can show that calm, relaxed, um, positive personality, you do influence everyone else around you. I think there's a lot of people, like I've been to networking meetings where people blame you know, they, they could be going through a divorce or they could be going through whatever. And so the first thing that they, that's what they talk about. You go, how are you? And so, oh, awful. Mm. My life is awful. And it's like, oh God, I'm going out of here. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm mute. <laughs> I wish you could mute people at a cafe. That'd be great. Yeah. But I, I also think some of that stuff, Darren, is like that self-fulfilling prophecy again. So if you go in expecting, oh, this is going to be crap and I'm feeling a bit down, the sun's not shining, I'm not really happy, um, then perhaps you won't be happy. Whereas if you go in and say, okay, what am I going to learn today? What's Jason going to teach me? What, what magic words is he going to come up with that I've never heard from before? Um, that's going to fulfill and, and create my life. It's that kind of changing your mindset to be more positive and then you'll get more positivity. Look, I think we can acknowledge that, yes, there are tough times, um, but mm. do you want to live in that or do, do you want to do that above the line thinking and it's like, yep, it is, it's pretty shit right now, but yep, how are we going to move forward? How are we um, going to change that? Yeah. So we do have a few ideas, I guess about how we can change these things. We've talked about it. We probably all have some ideas in our own head. So really, now we know that, that's all we need, right? No, no, yes? Okay, Darren's saying that's what we need is just knowledge. So Darren, I'll give you an example, because you nodded your head. I know. I know in COVID, I've put on the COVID-5. I'm not going to lie. It's been great. I know that if I need to lose weight, I need to stop drinking champagne and then eating cheese and bickies and chips and sitting on the couch in the evening and just watching telly, mindless stuff. I actually know I should be out there exercising, going for a walk. The kids have set up a gym in my garage. I've looked at it. You know, I know, I know that I need to exercise, eat better, stop drinking. That's what I need to do to lose weight. Do you know what I'm going to do tonight when I get finish all my work? I'm probably going to sit down, open a bottle of champagne, have a couple of drinks, have some salt and vinegar chips and just blur, you know, blob around. But I have the knowledge. So those kilos, they're just going to melt away because I've got that knowledge. They're just going to melt away, right? Yes. It's like the abundance session that I do. <laughs> well, I don't agree with no, you, Darren. No, I don't think Jason there. agrees. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jason agrees either. So I don't think knowledge is power. It's action. Action is where we get the power from. I can want and wish to lose weight all I like, but if I'm not going to do anything about it, I'm not going to lose any weight. Do you agree now, Darren? Totally. Oh, my God. You, I've, I've learned something today. <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that, that's wonderful. So this is all really great, okay? It's great to be above the line. It's an easy way to look at life, but how can we actually use it for ourselves and our teams? One of the ways that we do um, within the team that I'm, I'm in, even though our nice little team, and also with some of the businesses, is we use it as a reflection tool. So we sit back and think, how could I have done that differently? 
what could I have said? How could I have acted? And we just take some time out to kind of do some team building where we sit and talk about the areas that we struggle to be above the line. My business partner, Tegan, struggles immensely at the moment with homeschooling. Who wants to homeschool three kids? No one. Um, but she struggles with that. So we talk about how we can reframe that into an above the line attitude. Look at the great time you're getting to spend with the kids. You're not really likely ever to get this time again. You've really got to enjoy it. I know, Darren, with you, if you, you know, the fact that you get to spend time with your family, yes, you're away from all of us wonderful, beautiful people, but you do get that lovely time with mum, you know, and the kids. So that's really important. I would say continued use is really, really important. I know with some of the uh, sessions that uh, Joe has run, Joe talks about, you know, the fact that your energy follows, and I think you do too, Jason, your energy follows your thoughts and what you focus on. Like you were saying, let's focus on the end goal. If you focus um, on being above the line, so if you add that kind of terminology and into your everyday conversations, even into your agendas, you know, wonderful way to say to people, you know, how have you been above the line today? What did you do? Let's create some of that positivity. Um, another way is honestly calling each other out. Um, those of you who know Natalie from Section Technology, we did some work on being above the line. She took back quickly to her team and I've been there and I can hear them saying, that's not very above the line. I'm hoping they're not doing it just for my benefit. She tells me they're not, but it's really quick. Like that's a bit of a below the line thought. And it actually just quickly makes you go in your head. Oh, okay, hang on. I am being below the line. That's not me. That's not who I want to be. And just quick way to reframe. So <clears throat> I know we've got a couple more minutes. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I guess I wanted to talk quickly about what action will you take? Okay. Oh, whoops, I've gone too far and I've lost a slide, but that's okay. What action will you take today? You've got your piece of paper. Everyone's got their piece of paper? Everyone's got their line? Okay, pop yourself, pop your location marker on, a, on um, whether you're above the line or below the line, how far you think you are above or below. And if you want to, if you choose to, what's one action you could take to be more above the line today? What's something that you could do? And I'd love it if someone wanted to share. I'll share mine. Thanks, Jo. I'm going to take responsibility because my printer has failed here <laughs> and, and I was laughing earlier when you said about technology because I was thinking oh my god technology has gone kaput but I'm going to own it and just take action uh, um, inspired action to actually just um, uh, navigate what I can do instead of having to print something out because I don't actually need a printer. Okay. Yeah. That's I great. I love that you're taking responsibility and don't you feel a little bit better now rather than, you know, throwing things at the printer and going, God. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does anyone else have an action they would like to take? Every, yes, Darren. I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose not to eat all the stuff that you said before. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I'm doing on a daily basis. And instead, I'm going to focus on my health and go to the gym with my trainer, and then go for a long walk this afternoon. That is wonderful. I love that. You're inspiring me too. We can, I... we can walk and talk and drink at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just water, not gin, I promise. Um, it's too early. Oh, no. Anyway. Um, 
I hope you all do think that you can take some actions, even just some thoughts in your head to be more above the line. Really hope it's something that you choose to take on. Uh, like, you know, myself um, and my business partner and our team, we've taken on to be above the line. I hope you guys choose to take some action. It'd be wonderful to know and please let me know if you do. At the end of the day, I'm giving you permission to be above the line, all right? When you hang up from this call today, when you get up and you go to walk out your room, wherever you are, imagine there's a line there, okay? Imagine there's a line that you can step over today and always step over to be above the line and be as positive as you can. We're human, we're gonna make mistakes, we're not always gonna get it right, and that's okay. But thank you so much for joining me on my little above the line journey today and for receiving the gift. And has anyone got any questions?